lesson today is our final lesson in this class on the feasts of the Lord found in Leviticus 23. We've been looking at these feasts two ways, prophetically and messianically. It's very important, and I've said this over and over, and again I'm going to repeat it. So we understand these feasts prophetically from Leviticus 23. They relate to Israel. Speak on to the children of Israel, it says. These do not relate to the church. The church is not in sight at all in these feasts of the Lord. Now, when we come to Colossians chapter 2 and it talks about the holy days being a shadow of things to come and the substance is Messiah, Jesus, then the holy days, for example, the feasts, relate to Jesus. But again, there they relate to Jesus, not to the church. Now, we can get lots of good doctrinal teaching out of these feasts and how it relates and applies, perhaps, to the church. But keep in focus, especially in Leviticus 23, these are for Israel. So our final lesson, lesson number seven, we're looking at Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. Leviticus 23 in verses 33 through 36 and then 39 through 43 tell us about Sukkot, Tabernacles. And the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. The first day of this month we had Feast of Trumpets. Tenth day of the month we had Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. Now we come to the fifteenth day of the seventh month and we have Tabernacles, Sukkot. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. Remember, this is seven-day feast. You shall do no servile work therein. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. Now, in our study, we're not going to consider the eighth day. It's important. It's got a lot of uh, interesting uh, implications with it. But we're trying to understand the Feast of Tabernacles as a whole and the type that we see in it. In verse 39, we are told also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, Ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. And the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. The Feast of Tabernacles. You shall keep it a feast unto the Lord. Seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I and the Lord your God. Now there are other names for this feast. We find these in the Word of God. It's referred to as the Feast of Ingathering. It comes from Leviticus 23 in the 15th day of the seventh month when you have gathered in the fruit of the land. Ingathering. So it's been referred to as the Feast of Ingathering. It's also, and probably most importantly, known just as the Feast 
1 Kings chapter 8, verse 2. And all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto King Solomon at the feast in the month of Ethanim, which is the seventh month. Of all the feasts of Israel, this feast, Sukkot, Tabernacles, was known as the feast, even more so than Passover. All the feasts were important. They were the feasts of the Lord, appointments that Israel had with God. But this particular feast is just referred to as the feast. Now, to celebrate this festival, God commanded the Israelites to dwell in booths for seven days, Leviticus 23, 41 through 43, that we read. Today, in the Jewish world, in Israel, and across the world, the temporary nature of the structures, in other words, not completely closed to the elements, as you can see in this one here, reminds the inhabitants that God is the only true source of security and peace. These booths are called sukkahs. So what it's to do is to remind the inhabitants in these booths that the only real source of security is the Lord. The only true source of peace is the Lord. Leviticus 23, 40, they are told to rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. As much as any of these festivals, Sukkot, Tabernacles, is a festival of rejoicing. Perhaps that's why it was called the feast. The Temple Institute in Jerusalem comments this way uh, about this command. It is most apropos that the festival of Sukkot is referred to as the time of our joy. In their article, the Temple Institute goes on asking the question, what is the source of this great joy at Sukkot? They say, we can find no better illustration for this than the unique festival of Sukkot. For the booths in which Israel lived during these days symbolize her rock-steady, unshakable faith in the one God of Israel. Just in the fall, as the days are getting shorter and colder, most people are coming indoors. It is no longer pleasurable to sit outside as it was in the summer. But this is just when Every citizen in Israel moves from the comforts and security of home and takes up residence in temporary dwellings, thanking God for the harvest in this season and recalling his constant enveloping presence. This knowledge is true joy. Unconcerned with sunshine or warm weather, these temporary dwellings do not appear to be secure in the physical sense. They may shake a little in the wind. The roofs are but thatches open to the stars. But yet Israel sits within, unmoved and unaffected by what may be mistakenly perceived as a hostile world. For like the booth, this world is temporary, and we are but temporary dwellers within her. But just as the walls of this hut surround us, so we are surrounded by the constant, protective presence of God himself. The winds may shake, the elements may confront us, but the shadow of the sukkah is the shadow of the divine presence. Prophetically, thus, sukkot, or tabernacles, speaks of Israel dwelling in peace in their land because of Messiah tabernacling with Israel on earth. Ezekiel 37, 25 through 28 tells us this. 
and they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle, God says, my tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. A clear promise, reiterated oftentimes in the word of God, that one day the Jewish people will be back in the land of Israel. God will have established a covenant of peace with them. They will dwell in the land in safety and in peace because God will be dwelling with them. Prophetically, this is what tabernacles speaks of. Messianic, it speaks of Jesus being in Jerusalem, reigning over Israel and the entire world. And again, a reminder, Colossians 2, verses 16 and 17, the holy days, they are shadows of things to come, but the substance is Christ, Messiah, Jesus. So messianically, it speaks of Jesus being in Jerusalem and reigning over not only Israel, but the entire world. Leviticus 23, 44. This chapter closes, and Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feasts of the Lord. Remember? Moses was faithful. The Lord spoke unto Moses at the beginning of this chapter, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Moses was faithful. Moses declared unto the children of Israel, the nation of Israel, the Jewish people, the feasts of the Lord that God gave to Israel, the Jewish people. God himself will be faithful as well to keep the appointment that he has established with the nation of Israel. Feasts in the Hebrew has the meaning of keeping an appointment. The Jewish people have an appointment to meet the Lord which is illustrated for us in these feasts of Leviticus 23. And they will meet the Lord because it is God who is faithful. These are the feasts of the Lord, the appointment of God for Israel and the Jewish people. Remember this. Understand this. And it will help you to understand how the feasts in type, picture, what God is going to do for the nation of Israel. Not the church, but Israel. And when we speak of the feasts messianically, they focus on Jesus and what he would do. It's a great lesson, a great challenge. And we see in history how God has worked some of these things out. And he will continue to fulfill them as he promised. I hope this class has been a benefit to you in understanding the feast. Shalom.